Stand firm. Okay. 
Stand firm. Stand firm. Against him. And be strong. Where? In the faith. Remember what? The same kind of what? Suffering. That you are. Alright. Next verse. It is kindness. God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Amen. So after you have suffered a while. Hey! Coming up in your life that's struggling. 
determined to challenge it to be like Jesus, to be light, to be soft. Every day, in every situation, to be light and to be soft. Whether you're in church, it don't matter. In your very life, with your wealth, it don't matter. Every day, the challenge is to be soft and to be light. Amen. Let your words be, amen, be savory with soft. So let your light shine. So men might see your good work and give glory to God. It's not about you. It's about him. Oh, praise God. Amen. The Lord has called us, amen, and has placed us here, y'all, that we would represent or represent him. Amen. That's why he called us out, y'all, even while the scripture was read this one, even while we were in our sin. Amen. Our calling didn't happen when we got saved. He said, dress yourself in what? In humility. We talk about putting on 
on the whole armor of God. But understand, the armor of God is one of those layers that you put on. Oh, come on, y'all. When you're in Christ, y'all, and that, see, people make it act. Seems like y'all, there's only one layer of clothing you put on. No, no, no. We, we, we layer up. One of the layers you got to put on before you put on the army, y'all, you need to put on humility. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, shit. Humility is your undergarment. God. Yeah. Uh, that allows, say that, the armor to fit snugly yes. over you. Yes. Mm, my God, my God. Yeah. 
not from me. Why? Under the mighty power of God. Humble yourself. Because it, you're under God when you're humble yourself. You cannot be under God when you got pride. Oh, God. Amen. You're not under God. You ain't in your own when you got pride. Amen. Under God. And at the right time, amen, he will lift you up in honor. A lot of people want the honor. And they won't be lifted up. No. But it ain't the right time. Amen. Because before you can be lifted up, you need to humble yourself. Oh God, how many people are messed up because they fail to humble themselves? Yes. And they want to be exalted. Oh. Amen. And to be exalted, you need exaltation comes y'all after humility. Yes. Yes. Praise God. And then God says something in verse 7. And I, I hope you take good note of it. It'll change all of us. If we take good note. He says, give all your work. No Number one, you shouldn't have. It. But if you have, it, all right, then you need to give it to God. Because in Matthew, He tells you, don't worry about anything. But here, He tells you, in case you get Matthew, we're further down the road. You didn't unload when I asked you to unload, right. and you didn't get rid of it. He said, now we're down the road. We're moving forward. I need you to give all your words and your cares to God. To God. Not to me. To God. Hey, so many people complain when the church wasn't there, when I needed it. God never told you to bring the church. He told you to bring it in. Yes, he never told you, cast your need on the church. He said, cast your need and your care on me. Yeah. Why? He said, for he cares about you. I told the people that left. Well, when I was in my need, y'all didn't have it. I went to his brother, that brother went to heaven. What's their need? Did you talk to God? People got wrong information about what the church should do. Uh huh. And what? And what is the ministry of the church? And I and I apologize, y'all, because we're somewhat the blame for putting yes. out that facade. Amen. Yes. That we're here to take care of everything that you go through. That's right. That's right. Oh no, no, no. The chief aim and purpose for the church, y'all. Jesus said, "Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not." Prevail against it. The church, y'all, purpose is to be a light in God's world. Yes, we are not here, y'all, to answer every Tom, Dick, and Harry about everything that's going on in their, uh, excuse my expression, in their little puny lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right. It's their last answer, y'all. We're to take them to Jesus. Yes, Jesus said he'll do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. He'll tell me to do it. Who got crying in here? But I'm going to press on. Amen. Amen. Because you can't, you can't resist when you don't submit. And many times, y'all, we're trying to resist some stuff, but we have not submitted to God. Yes. Yes. Until you submit, y'all, that's why you have problems with a whole lot of things in your totality of life. Amen. It, it comes about because you fail to submit. And I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of y'all sit right here now that knows that God has said something to you and you have not submitted to it? And then you wonder why, and then you got a problem, and you're listing this thing over here. Hello. Woo! Amen. And so verse number eight, he says, so stay alert. The watchword for today is stay alert. Jesus said this one. He said watch. What I say to one, I say to all. Watch. Watch me to stay alert. And this is not a time to go to sleep. And don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open. And let me keep your light burning. This is more than ever before. You need to be alert. You need to be alert of what's going on. You need to be alert and be able to interpret y'all what has happened. And that in our society today, in light of what God has said. 
I told you that God is always speaking and God is always giving information. But many times we don't hear him. And because we don't hear him, we come up with a big way of dealing with that in our personal life. God help us today. Stay alert. Why? You need to watch out for your what? Your what? Your great enemy. Who is he? Amen. Your great enemy is the devil. The, your great enemy name is not Barbara Baker. Not Carrie Ann Ashley. Uh huh. Not Tyrone John. Not Steve Ryan. That, that's not your great enemy. Your great enemy, and we need to refocus. The great enemy, y'all, is the devil. He said that the devil. Amen. And he uses people. But the enemy is the devil. And who's the devil? The Bible said he prowls around like a royal lion looking for someone to devour. What do you want? He want to eat you up. He want to get you unfocused. Come on, y'all. Amen. The, the, and I see him. I see him. I see him. No, I see him constantly in every little thing, y'all, trying to come in to derail us from where we're going. Now, I'm, 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 the, I'm the watcher on the wall. I need to see. If nobody else is, I need to see. Amen. That, that's what the Bible said. You made it for evil, but God made it for good. And a lot of times, you're not even aware, amen, that you're a pawn of him. And the way you do it, you don't recognize and that you're being used by him. I'm not saying that you're demon possessed, but you can't be demonized. When you don't learn the problem with God, and the devil will use you. That's why the Bible says, don't give him no space. You ain't got to be unsafe to give him space. If he got space, y'all, he will operate. And a lot of baptized believers say, man, he's operating in their life. So the Bible says in verse 9, you have to watch why. Because you need to stand firm against him. Stand firm against the devil. And be strong in your faith. Not be strong in your knowledge. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in your faith. I believe God. And it will be done according to his word. That's being strong in my faith. Amen. I'm not being strong in, 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 in Christ's church. I'm being strong in my faith. What did God say? He seated me. It happened, but he told me, sit down. Sit down. Where can you go? Where was this over here? No, God told me, sit down. Come on, y'all. He pulled me out of the mat and told me, sit down. You got to know your faith. You got to know where you stand. How, how, how did you come to know God? What did God do in your life? Amen. Is, is God a priority for you? Does everything follow God? No, we're, we're torn between submitting to God and resisting the calls of the world and life. Life calls you and you run. Come on, y'all. There's nobody in here that has an appointment with a medical physician or whoever you are that don't make y'all appointment. I don't care whether you have bro broken a broken hip, a broken neck, a broken leg. I don't care. Y'all will make it a promise. I'm going to get to that appointment. Amen. You will make it. You will make it. Hallelujah. But when God said, Amen, submit to me in fasting and prayer. Well, today I got something that's good. Today I don't feel like it. And this is going on. You're right, Pastor. You're right. You won't submit. You're right. You won't submit. And so then you, when you have a problem, resisting some of the stuff that you're going through, you wonder what happened. Your, your failure to resist is based on your submission. Oh my God. Yes, 
Praise God. He said, be strong in the faith. He said, remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. See, y'all, what the devil, what the devil does, listen, ain't nobody, you, you, ain't nobody else doing it. You know, you're the only elder that's coming in. You, you know they, these other fellas, they're doing that. You, 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 you know, ain't nobody else going through what you're going through. And what, and his, his object is, y'all, Amen. And the Bible said, like the glory lion. What a lion do, and that's why you got to be careful and watchful. If y'all ever watched a, 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 a picture with a lion, how they get their prey, what they do, they watch the whole crowd. All right, and they look for that one that's really not focused, not really going with everybody. Uh -huh, and they spy them out. And what they look to do, since they see that, they're going to separate that one from the rest of them. So when, when the lion come out, the the uh, the most of the generation was gonna run. Yeah. Amen. But they know that one was not focused. And that's the one that's just going out. Come on, y'all. See, he does the same thing in the body of Christ. A moment he noticed when you're not focused. And and, and although he's gonna show all the time, but everybody else will be able to get away, he's gonna catch you. He's gonna catch you when you're not focused. When your faith is not grounded, he'll, he'll catch you. He'll catch you. I hate to report that I've seen him catch you. And so then the Lord shows us by giving verse 7. He said, in, in his kindness, I want you, in his kindness, God called you. To share in his in eternal glory by Christ Jesus. His eternal glory. But understand, y'all, <laughs> that's true. For you to share in his eternal glory, you got to resist the glory of the work. Come on. Amen. You got to resist it. Amen. And it's tough to resist it when everybody else is partaking of it. Praise God. And, and listen. And so the Bible said, after you have suffered a while. See, a lot of times when we go through things, we, you know, sometimes we testify as though we, we've been the same for eternity. When was eternity? Two days. Give me y'all. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've been going through. <laughs> I know I, I you've been going through. When did it come on? That was Monday. What's the day? Tuesday? Come on, man. Y'all got to help me out. I've been going through. Y'all can't take it. The Bible, the Bible said a little while. A little while. And then God said three things he would do. He would restore you. Yes. And then he will do what? Support you. And number three, he will strengthen you. And then to restore means to bring you back. Right? And then to, to strengthen y'all means to give you the, 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 the strength you need to go forward. Right? And to support you means he'll hold you up. You know, he is my strength. Strength like no up. Uh-huh. See, see, God, those are things that he said he'll do. The enemy, the, let, let me get to this, this devil. The enemy will make you think that, that Eleanor, you're supposed to strengthen me, you're supposed to restore me, and you're supposed to support me. The Bible don't say that. The Bible says God will. That's what God will do. See, we're looking to the wrong. We're looking to the wrong focus. Amen. The focus is on Him. Amen. He, God is for. That's why He told us, take your words, take your care, put them on me. He didn't say, you put them on another, another brother or sister. He said, put them on me. And then, and, and then he said, and he'll place you 
the All Firm Foundation. All Firm Foundation. And y'all know no other foundation can be laid than that is laid. Amen. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in that being the chief cornerstone, the prophets and the apostles making up that foundation. Which all tells us, y'all, is the word that you need. It's the firm foundation. Amen. There, there's not a feeling. There's not a church. It's the word. The firm foundation is the word. Do you have a word to stand on? That's the firm foundation. Amen. Everybody that they want to tell you about the feelings and the hype and, and, the, and all of this and the, and the song and then the preaching. It's not in the song. It's not in the preaching, y'all. It's in the word. It's in the word. Let's go to James chapter number four. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God wants to, God wants to, uh, amen. God wants to resist some stuff, y'all. Amen. But, but, but you got to, you got to learn how to humble yourself. Got to learn to humble yourself. Verse number five. I'm going to read from my version of New Living. It says, do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate and that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And is the scripture right? Yes. Yeah. See, God called you out with loving God. He placed his spirit in you, y'all, that you ought to be also loving and kind. Amen. The spirit in you ought to be passionate. Oh, come on. See, I'm passionate about what God got in me. Yes. My God. Hey, listen, y'all. What's in me? Yeah, it's growing in me. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. What you got to resist? You got to resist your head knowledge that's coming to you against the spirit Amen. that's within you. Because the head will take. You ain't got, you ain't got to do this. God understands. Oh. When did you become my interpreter? Amen. To God. Come on, y'all. God understands, y'all. You know? Y'all, 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 listen. Y'all, y'all have to get together every time the people of God come together. You really don't. But the word, I call my friend, right? but the word said, forget not to assemble yourself together as the manner of some already is. And when you assemble, the focus is to provoke one yes. another to good godliness yes. and to good works. Yes. Yes. Amen. You would not find this provoking, amen, you know in the mall. Uh -huh. You ain't going to find y'all in the restaurant. No. Come on, y'all. No one that's no other plan. You're going to be provoked to do what God has called you to do and be in alignment with the spirit within you. It's among the fellowship that the folk can come. Oh, praise God. And will help you to resist. Because then you will understand I need to clothe myself in humility. And, and there's some things that I need to take off. Before I can put humility on. I mean, Colossians chapter 3. Tell some stuff we got to put off. Put it off. You can't put some humility on until you take some stuff off. Line. Come on, y'all. There, there's some things you got to pull off, y'all. Humility don't fit over a lot of this mess. Amen. It, it, it just don't fit, y'all. Hallelujah. And then these folks trying to, they're trying to go on the arm of God. They never heard so many people talk about the arm of God. And, and nobody never talked about the arm of humility. They never talk about what you got to take off even for humility to be put off. And so again, the enemy comes to deceive you and know that you're not properly dressed. Uh -uh. See, y'all, when we put on the right armor, amen, come on, y'all. Amen. See, God designed Oh God, God designed I, I mean, the armor so that oh Jesus, I mean, understand the, 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 the people just came out for the law enforcement not too long ago where they got uh, 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 clothing that's bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, bulletproof. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But you know, our stuff been bulletproof a long time. Oh, yes, yes. Come on. Yes, sir. Shut it up. Yes. My, my, my question is, why are we getting so many believers that die? Oh, my God. What, what, what they got on? And then, because the enemy should not have penetrated. Yes. Come on, y'all. The enemy should have penetrated your heart. Amen. 
that God has lavished on me generously. That I can understand, amen, what God is doing in this day is grace. Yes. Holla. And that grace, I, I, can, I, can, I can pass it along. Yes. I understand how to forgive and how to help. Amen. And so God will help you, amen, to resist. But you got to be humble. So he said, humble yourself. Verse 7. Humble. Who? Humble who? Understand, the church's job is not one to humble you. If you don't get humble, ain't that job. See, we, the, see, salvation is very personal. Amen. And we need to humble ourselves. Yes. To humble yourself, recognize this, y'all, that, amen, that I've got a spirit of pride. My God, my God. That I've got to bring in the subjection. Jesus. Amen. I get my little attitude. I got to know. I get, I get my little attitude. Yes. Yes. Amen. And I've got, though, I've got to judge myself. Come on, Pastor. And that's why the Bible said. If you judge yourself, you won't be judged. See, it's every day. If you tell yourself every day, I look at that 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 white person and I, you know, I don't like them. How many of y'all know you got a problem? Because God said love everybody. So you need God to help you. Right? And you need to judge yourself. I got a wrong attitude. Because of your own personal financial situation, not to give in church. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and how many times have you not given tithing because of your own personal situation? You're right. You're right. Which you did not trust God. It's a lack of trusting in God when He said, Bring all. Bring all. When bring up, that means submitting to Him. Yes. See, it's and I find this, I find this problematic. How can we forget something that should be so close to us? And yet still on the other hand, we talk about the goodness of God. Is it? See, because y'all, it should be shown in our words. See, love is not stationary. Love is very active. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're to be like him. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so verse 8 said, resist. Uh, verse 7, again, said, humble yourself before God. And then he said, resist the devil. First the humbles, then the resistance. Yes. And the devil will flee from you. Yes. You ain't got to chase the devil. Wow. People talk about, I gave the devil a run. You ain't got to give him no run. You ain't got to get no switch and beat him out the hop. You ain't got to chase the devil. Amen. The Bible said if you submit to God, resist him, he'll take off. When Jesus in in, in before after his baptism, Jesus resisted the devil. Because everything the devil threw at him, Jesus just gave him the word. He had only just got uh, uh, the word say. And then the Bible said, the devil lived him for a season. Yes. The devil will leave. Yes. But he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Snorts, oh. I'll be back. <laughs> he will be back. He will be back. The final conquering of him, y'all, is when Christ comes into the sky. Yes. But before that time, y'all, you're going to have to deal with him for the rest of your life. Amen. He will be back. Hallelujah. You might have conquered all of this in this. You might have conquered him. Amen. As far as, as, far as purity, as far as sexual purity, y'all. But he'll come back to you, y'all, in, 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 in your in attitude. He'll come back to you in, in, in nastiness. He'll come back to y'all in your culture. Come on, on y'all. He will be back. Yes. I, I don't like the way that they treat somebody. He'll be back. Yeah. Understand. He'll use anything. 
anything for his benefit yes. to bolster his position. Amen. But you've got to know yes. in whom you believe and you've got to know who's in you. Folks, you've got to know the Christ of the universe is in me. I'm not living this life in the flesh on my own. So when people start praying, talking about, well, you know I'm only you. Yeah, God knows it too. That's why he put his spirit in you. Because the flesh going to act up and you're going to have that conflict. You're going to have to deal with the flesh and deal with the God in you. And if you can only resist the flesh to the, to the, to the extent that you be humble to the spirit of God within you. Amen. Praise God. When you, when you yield to the Spirit of God in you, y'all, it's easier for you to resist the things of the flesh. Yes. And the things of flesh will always call your name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Things of flesh know your name. Yes, yes they, they know your name. Oh, praise God. Amen. So verse 8 says, come close to God. And you, that's the secret of God. Come close to God. See, if you go really, you got to get close to God. Amen. And when you come to close to God, then God will come close to you. Yes, Lord. Amen. See, hopefully y'all don't get tired of me talking about me and Sister Davis. Amen. But me and Sister Davis are married for going on 50, 50 first year. The only reason why we can still be together. All right. Because I had to lay aside some stuff. And she had to lay aside some stuff. That's the way it worked. That's the only way we could come close to you. Amen. Because me lay aside everything, her lay aside everything. No, we've been divorced a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Both had to lay aside. We had to lay aside some stuff. Y'all, it, it, it becomes a covenant relationship. And, and as I lay this eyes up, and, and she lays this out, we're able to get closer to right. death. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, our minds and our lives start to line up. You know? It's no longer her way and my way. It's our way. Right. Right. And, and, and even at, at this stage, y'all, we're still learning how to get closer together. I thought by this time we should have it. It should be all done. I mean, you know, it's shucks. We should be safe. Amen. She be saved. And I found out it ain't that way. I tell all it ain't that way. It ain't, it, I'm telling you, it's not that way. And, 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 and seemingly, you say, well, it's about probably, probably a week don't go by that we don't find something that we got to let go to come together. You're right. Absolutely. Come on, y'all. Amen. Why? Because I'm dealing with I'm dealing with the spirit of God oh, in me. Come on. Fight the flesh. Yes. Amen. And, 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 and the, the, my own flesh and then, then her flesh. Y'all, listen, flesh get together, flesh is a mess. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's why you, you really want you really want to cultivate the spirit in each other. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and so because she keeps coming back at something, and the flesh said, well, get her back. Y'all, you got to resist the devil. You don't do that. No, that's right. Amen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She got me on that. No, I can't retaliate. I've got to find another way. Because I will win her and not drive her. So it can't be a tip for tap. You have to ask God for grace. Because the flesh will say, she, she did that, you do that. No, no, you need grace. I'm telling y'all, to live this life without the grace of God, you, gonna, you ain't going to make it. Yeah, that's right. You need the grace of God. Yeah. I don't care how much you know, how much you think. I, no, you need the grace of God. Yeah. And so the Bible said, come close to God, he'll come close to you. And then he says, uh, he said, wash your hand. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, my God. Why, why the hand? And I said, I thought about that too. Lord, why the hand? Why the hand? The hands represent your work. Yes. Come on, Pastor. The hands represent your work. As a matter of fact, amen, the hands, y'all, amen, 
uh, the, the Bible says in Psalms, Psalms 24, said, who can climb to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those who have, whose hands, clean hands, and pure heart, who do not worship idols, and never tell lies. So if those conditions is not met, y'all, you can't come close. And many times we want to come clean, co close to God by hands is dirty. Dirty from what you've been having. Come on, y'all. What have you been having? My God, my God. And so he said, wash your hands. Purify your heart. For your loyalty is the fight between God and the world. Your, your loyalty. Your loyalty is divided. Praise God. Your loyalty is divided. Let me read the, a couple more verses and I'm done. He said, let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Don't, don't speak evil. But if you criticize and judge each other, then you're criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge, whether it applies to you or not. Amen. 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 So let me close today. Amen. If we want to resist, if we want to submit, there are four things we've got to do. Number one, we must be subject to the will of God. Number two, we must draw nigh to God. Suffer. Then we got to draw nigh to God. Number three, we must clean our hands and purify our hearts. Clean your hands, purify your heart. Amen. God wants, God wants your hands clean. God wants your heart purified. And number four, we must humble ourselves in his sight. See, because a lot of times, y'all, we want to show humility. It's false because I want you to pat oh, on the back. Come on, come on. That's false. That's false. No, in, in God's sight. Amen. That, whether somebody here is here or not, that's not important. That, that don't matter. What, what, what the God see? See, because God judges your heart, y'all. Amen. God judges y'all. That's what the, the Lord is looking for. So, so when you run through struggles in life and you find out that you have problem resistance and stuff, y'all, ask yourself, have, have I submitted to God? My God. Y'all, when, when you have a tough time resisting lust, resisting being on time, resisting treating people right, resisting cussing somebody out, Come on, y'all. You got to ask yourself, have I submitted to God? Submission to God is the catalyst and the key that you can resist everything the devil throws at you. And understand, it's the devil that's the one that's throwing all of this mess at you. He throws it at your life. He throws it at your walk. He throws it at your mind. Amen. When you humble yourself and submit to God, God, the Bible said, he'll keep your mind in perfect peace. But you got to keep it stayed on him. That, that's, the, that's the mind. I got to keep it stayed on him. Jesus said, amen, when he left, he prayed to the Father. He said, Father, I want them to have the joy that I, that me and you had. All right? That me and you had. So I pray that they would enter into this tribal relationship. So as you and I, that they also will have this same kind of relationship, God. That means they got to draw nigh to me as I've drawn nigh to you. People, let me tell you something. This world is very cunning. Oh my God. It is 
convincing ways, y'all. It's very convincing. And that's why, that's why you, you, you got to stay in the word. You got to pray. You got to ask God for mercy. You got to ask God for grace to help you. Because when you think you made it, and let me tell you something, something that's going to show up. When you think you're doing pretty good, y'all, something else is going to try to trip you up. There's always snares in your life. That's how St. Jesus said, I come to many toils and snares. I've already come. Let me tell you something. You got some more to go through. You're going to run your toils and snares in life. Amen. But when you learn how to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, the Spirit of God that within you will help you deal with your natural sisters and brothers, your spiritual sisters and brothers, your children, your grandchildren, all of this, y'all. You got to submit all of this mess to God and stop, as the Bible said, leaning on your own understanding. Amen. What did the Word say? Again, I get that to you with, what did the Word say? What did the Word say? All, oh, not some of them. Amen. With my grandkids. Come on, they all my way. With my wife. With the church. Come on, y'all. With anything that comes out in my life, I need to acknowledge God. But how many of us come up with a better idea? We come up with a better idea. And the flesh idea is not a better idea. You've been given the Spirit of God. Start getting dumb. Amen. It's time now to get smart. Yes. Amen. We, we, we made, God has brought us through some changes. A whole lot of changes. Amen. And one of the most powerful things God, God to me, God is there, and that is taking the illness off of me and getting you to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. And let you know that you got the same stuff I got through Jesus. And I'm not your, I'm not your intermediary. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Jesus, amen, is the intermediary. Yes. Yes. Amen. But in this church life, y'all, we have made preachers and so forth, we made them an intermediary. Uh -huh. And that ain't true. Because you got as much right to call on Jesus as I do. Amen. 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 And Jesus, amen, will answer you, amen, just like he answered me. Yes. Amen. But you got to do what I do. You got to humble yourself. You got to get right before God. Amen. Y'all, there, no, there are no free passes for living this life. There ain't no free pass. I can't give you a free pass. No free pass. You say, well, I had an operation. I'm going to tell you, no free pass. You say, well, I got a condition. I'm going to tell you again, no free pass. See, when we get to the point to understand that God says what he means and he needs what he said, amen, then we, we beg to resist. We beg to come into the abundant life that God is talking about. Amen. We have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You will not walk around another day with gloom on your face. Amen. They're talking now about what they call a reverse something in the business world. Because of what happened, a reverse, whenever this thing happened, they said you're going to recession. And, and all people is worried about it. May I tell you, I'm not up this world. Amen. I'm not worried about no reverse recession or nothing else. Amen. When you get your focus right. You got to stay focused on him. May I encourage you as a people of God. The Bible said, when you see these things happen, the Bible said, look up. Look where? Look up. Why? Your redemption draws not. The people of God today should be looking up, not out. Should be looking up. Amen. Should be looking up, not out. Look it up, 
Nada. Look it up, Nada. Look it up, Nada. Because if you look out, y'all, you'll get discouraged. But if you look up, there's hope in looking up. Oh, yeah. Look up. Oh, praise God. Look up. And sometimes, y'all, you might, you might look around and might get the Elijah syndrome. Just me. Understand. God got servants that have not bowed to me. He got served. Have not bowed to me. And maybe you don't see him today. But keep looking up. Amen. Keep looking up. Keep looking up. All you need is in you. You just got to keep looking up and let God activate. Activate God that that you put in me. When you call me out, you put everything in me that I need to make it. So I need to activate. Amen. He's my comfort. Amen. Praise God. Well, 